Good morning out there, Facebook world. Um, as you start your weekend, I just wanted to give you a couple little thoughts, some things that I was thinking about. One of the, the concepts that I think it's hard to wrap our minds around is the concept of a loving God, but yet a loving God who has requirements of us and, and, and wants us to obey and tells us what to do. I think, I think it's hard for some of us. We think, well, if he loves me, he's going to be all approving and all accepting, but yet the God of the Bible that I read about has certain requirements and things, and, and it's hard to reconcile the two. But as I've grown in, in life and as I've had children and become a father, this concept makes a little bit more sense to me. As a father, I'm always going to love my children. Um, without a doubt. I mean, I, I'm going to love them unconditionally. They're my children. Um, I love them. I care about them. But sometimes my children do things that, that I don't approve of. Sometimes my children do things that even demand a punishment. And I remember several years ago when my little boy Roman um, was pretty little, he got in trouble for something. I don't even remember what it was. Maybe he hit his brother, stole something, you know, typical, uh, something that a kid does that got him in trouble. And I remember he got in trouble for it and we're scolding him for it. And I remember him saying, kind of exasperated, this idea of, well, you don't love me anymore. And I remember I stopped and I had to explain to him, no, Roman, I'm always going to love you. But what you did right now, I don't love. The behavior that you showed right now wasn't acceptable to me and it, and it upset me. It made me sad. It made your mom sad. And you're getting in trouble for it because it's not a behavior that I approve of. Now, I still love you. I love you even when you do bad things, but I love, um, but I don't love the behavior. I love you when you do bad things, but I still want you and require of you to do, you know, the good things. And that's kind of the same way with us and God. God's always going to love us. He loves us unconditionally. He made us, but he's not always going to love the things that we do. He's not always going to approve of our actions or our behavior. And what I want us to do, and what I want you to think about today, is the idea of allowing God's love to motivate you to serve him. Because it's my hope that with my children, you know, right now when they're little, I understand. The reason they probably do what I do is they don't, or what I say is because they don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to do that because dad will get mad and dad will punish me. But as they grow up, hopefully my relationship with them changes and they are compelled by my love instead. They look at the love that I've shown them. They look at, you know, how me and Zinni have cared about them and raised them. And as they get older, hopefully they're going to live in a way that we would approve in alignment with our values and behave in a way that's, that's good because of, you know, the way we treated them because of our love. I want them to be motivated as they get older because of my love and their love for me as opposed to fear of getting in trouble with me or fear of letting me down. I want them to be motivated by love. And you know, there's a couple passages of the scripture that kind of talk about that a little bit. In John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So even there you see, you know, reciprocal kind of love. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, the apostle there is talking about their motivation for serving the Corinthians and things like that. And in chapter 5, verse 14, he talks about the love of Christ compels us. I want us as we mature in our faith to not be motivated by fear anymore, but instead to be compelled by love. God is always going to love you, but he might not always love what you do. But because he loves you and you love him, try to live in a way that he would be pleased with. Try to live in a way that makes him happy. That's my goal for my children. I want them to know that I love them and I want them to love me in return and I want them to behave and live in a way that brings me joy. God, your heavenly father made you. He loves you and he wants you to live in a way that brings him joy. That's all the thoughts I have for today. Have a great weekend and a blessed day. Thanks for tuning in.